of Crux 95. Welcome to Trust 95 and to the biggest night in the dog showing year because it's best in show night and in around about 60 minutes time there'll be a brand new holder of this magnificent Kennel Memorial Trophy and we'll know at last who's going to be this year's Crufts Best in Show from an initial entry of more than 20,000 dogs. Well so far we know three winners from the six groups which are judged in this huge main ring behind me and they are the winner of the Gundog Group, which is the Irish setter, show champion, Starchell Chicago Bear. And in the working group, Shetland Sheepdog champion, Mary Hugh Rosa Blur took the prize. And a Welsh Terrier won the Terrier Group, champion, Ch Purston leading lady at Wigan. And in just a moment, we'll be bringing you the highlights of the fourth group, that's the Hounds, which was actually judged here last night. And later in the programme, you'll be able to see the Toys and Utility groups, which are actually judged here this evening. But before that, we thought it would be rather interesting to invite two canine visitors to the show to go out and take a look and give us their view on what they think of the items on offer away from the show ring. Well, here we are at Crufts again now. Where's that Anatolian Carabash girl? Albert, darling, how could you be so cool? It won't let me cool. Well, that's your problem, you know. You're too tall. If you've got short legs like me, you just duck under the barrier. Now, does that tell you I'd always bring you to the best places? Look at this. So crowded, Albert. Cramps my style. Ah, you women. You're all the same. Never satisfied. <laughs> Talking about style. Now, that's what I call style. Oh, God, Albert, you're so common. You should have told me if you wanted a floozy. The seats are terrible. I can't see. Yeah, mine's all right. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a running commentary. They're just about to do something drastic to these giant schnauzers. Brings tears oh, to the eyes. Darling, I'm so bored. Can't we shop? Shopping? Oh, I hate shopping. Oh, well, go on now. I'll tell you what. There's a lot of stuff here. Choose an outfit for yourself. I'll buy it for you. Oh, Albert, you little healer. How do I look? Do you want an honest opinion? Actually, with those socks, you look like Nora Batty. Oh, that's it, that's it, darling. I'm not speaking to you. Ah, uh, well, you should, you know. I look great. Look at this. Bit of style, eh? How about that? Eh, what do you think? Oh, well, please yourself. Ah, oh, well, after all, I think I deserve that tickle. How about you, Annie? Well, Are you comfy? For goodness sake, Albert, this crafts is designed for midgets. I think I need to be alone. 2,748 hounds qualified for crafts this year. 2,747 of them appeared before the judges. Fergus here didn't. He turned up too late. Poor old thing. Never mind, it's a marvellous group, even without Fergus, the Hounds. If you want to live with a Hound, then you have to have a steady nerve, because they're bright, single-minded, and frequently selectively deaf. They're born to hunt, but a Hound will win your heart. There were 2,748 of them this year for Judge Ferrelith Summerfield. I should hope to find good moving dogs, and of course I want them to be typical according to the standard of points, the Kennel Club standard of points. You've got an awful lot of experience in that big ring at Crufts. You've judged groups, you've also judged best in show in the past. Is there a particular atmosphere? Very definitely, and I'm still nervous every time. I'm, even thinking about it makes me feel rather nervous. I think uh, to go out in front of all those people and uh, they're the best, should be the best dogs in the country. A lot of people spend a lot of money and time getting them right for the group, and then there's me having to try and get the best one. 
a little insight into how Ferrolith Summerfield might be feeling now that she's faced with the group. 27 breeds from the miniature Dachshunds to the giant Irish Wolfhound. She told me that as soon as her hands get on the first dog, though, all the nerves vanish as she begins to enjoy the task. And the first of her final six is the Borzoi, a truly graceful Russian hound. Shulwood's striking rubies, owned and handled by Richard Duckworth. Ruby won her very first ticket today, and she has brains as well as beauty because she's a working hound. And that's what they were in the first place, Jessica. They were used in Russia, as you say, in packs for hunting wolves, and you've got to be fast, and you've got to be tough to be able to do that. They've been over here about 120 years so far. It is a sight hound, that is a dog that hunts by eye rather than nose. Very aristocratic, very dignified, and very, very elegant. Swansford Placidor is a long-haired Dachshund, just 20 months old, and Paco is owned by Margaret Swan and Daniel Roberts. Margaret's been in dogs for over 50 years, and her Dachshund kennel is extremely successful, isn't it, Les? And why not indeed? Look at the condition on that dog. Glamour is a word that I think we overuse in, in the world of dogs, but that is a glamorous hand. The whole personality is showing there. It's in wonderful condition. Of course, they're tough. Uh, it says that they are courageous to the point of rashness when hunting badger, which of course they don't do these days. No, not now that badgers are protected. <laughs> <laughs> Still a very useful looking dog Indeed. though. The second Dachshund in Ferrolith Summerfield's final six, the miniature smooth-haired Dachshund, Candy or Champion Dariska Candice. She's a 15-month-old bitch owned and bred by Levain Coxon, who must be absolutely delighted with this litter because Candy's brother, Caesar, won the 1994 Pup of the Year contest. And I would be very proud to be able to breed this sort of dog. The standard for the Dachshunds is exactly the same, regardless of size, regardless of coat, and there are, of course, six varieties. But if you want a real show animal, this is the sort you're looking for. Full of personality, moving in a determined way, looking a million dollars. Now, every inch of this greyhound, to me, just oozes athlete. Every muscle outlined for you on the surface. Champion Winsfield Northern Pearl of Sea Swift is a three-year-old bitch known as Dolly at home, and she's owned by Ian and Rita Bond. She was bred by Elaine and Bob Newsham. Show greyhounds are quite different, aren't they, Les, from the working, the racing greyhounds? Yes, there are marked differences. Mind you, the show greyhound can still run, as I know to my cost on one occasion. But they look as though they're doing 90 miles an hour when they stand still. Very gentle, very affectionate, even tempered as pets. But they can go very, very fast. And if one runs away and you haven't got the lead, don't chase it, whatever you do. <laughs> I'm unashamed to call this dog a favourite. He's the breed record-holding Petit Basset Griffon Vendian champion, Dera Zato. Zato's just three and a half years old, and he won Best in Show at Bath Championship Show earlier in the year for his owner, breeder Nick Frost. They are such personalities, Les. You wouldn't be partisan, would you, Jessica? No, not really. at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a striking dog. It's a striking breed, I think. Uh, they can be vocal, uh, very vocal, on, on the hunt, but what a very strong, compact animal that is. Not one to have if you've got neighbours who don't like dogs yeah, barking. Yeah. <laughs> there are many graceful outlines in the hound group, but none quite as breathtaking as the Saluki. Debbie Copperthwaite's dog, Valley, champion Al Khalif's Valley, is eight and a half years old. So he's come through as a veteran, but from the open class. He's won four groups in the past and was best of breed here in 1990. You can just see this animal in the desert, can't you, Les? Well, it's one of the most graceful of breeds, very, very highly revered by the Arabs, who will rarely sell a Saluki, but will give one as a mark of honour, and I think you can see why. Oh, I'd love to be given a dog like that. Oh. <laughs> but they have this devastating ability to look right through you. Now, from that lineup of six, Ferrolith Summerfield will select her group winner and place another three, first to fourth. A final look at the Borzoi, the long-haired Dachshund, that little miniature smooth-haired Dachshund, the Greyhound, Petit Basset Griffon Vendien, and finally, that beautiful Saluki. I must admit, I think we're all tipping the Saluki, but it looks as if our winner might be going to come from the other end of the line. Yes, it is. It's the Borzoi winning her first challenge certificate today, and now the group at Trust. Shoalwood striking rubies have really struck gold for our owner, Richard Duckworth. Now, who's going to be reserved? 
It's the miniature smooth heads action candy completing a wonderful year for Levane Coxon. Our Chip Saluki, the veteran, takes the third spot, rather reluctantly by the looks of it. And last but by no means least, the long haired action Swansford Platador is the group number four. But the best of 2,748 hounds entered here at Crufts 95, the Borzoi, another breed that has never yet won best in show at Crufts. This is Marshall Flashman at Shermead, Flash for short, and I'm going to take him for a ride. Come on, Flash, in you get. Good boy. Thinking about the times you drove in my car. Good boy, Flash. How important is it to keep your dog secure when you're travelling? It is most important. Let's take a 65 pounds dog travelling at 70 miles an hour and you suddenly break. That is the equivalent of a ton coming at you. A lot of people may say that the cages actually restrict the dog's movement. They don't want to restrict the dog whilst they're travelling. Is that a fair comment? There are many phobias about the size of the cages, etc. But as long as the cage has got sufficient length for the dog to lie down and to turn round, then there is no reason at all that a dog should be not be contained in a cage. It is far happier in a cage and far more relaxed and not only that, it will do its job and show or work at the end of the day better, having travelled safely. So you've got your dog secure in the car, but how secure are you legally? Well, Peter Rolfe is a solicitor who specialises in these sort of matters. Peter, you've left your dog in the car, but is it now in a public place? Well, it's been very well settled law for, for some time now that uh, whereas the inside of your car isn't a public place in itself, if that car is in a public place, then whatever's in the car is in a public place. And therefore, your dog in the car, on the highway, for the legal purposes, is in a public place. But if I want to leave my car and I leave my dogs in it, if someone breaks into that car, I want the dogs to bite them. I want them to see them off. Am I liable legally? Uh, if someone who's a trespasser wants to break into your car and he can see clearly that there's a dog in the car, then he is voluntarily assuming the risk of breaking into your car with the dog there. Uh, and going on from there, if a man keeps a dog for his own protection and there is a sign clearly stating, beware of the dog, a trespasser who breaks into that home, again, as with the car, is assuming the responsibility voluntarily of any injury which might be caused in that uh, event. Let's go to the restaurant and get something to eat, man. Yes, I'm strictly for that, man. Well, I know just the thing to get. Well, well tell me so I can get some. Well, listen to me and I'll tell you everything. I'm listening. Here I come. Come on. Anyone who's ever owned a dog will be only too well aware of just how much they can eat. Let's take, for example, an average-sized animal, something like a Labrador, which could live for as long as 14 years. Well, in that time, it will eat all of this mountain of dog food. That's 150 sacks costing something like £4,500. With so many dogs in Britain today, it's not surprising, therefore, that the pet food industry is vast. And we've decided to investigate. Oh, but incidentally, in case you're wondering what's going to happen to this great big mountain of food, it's all been donated by the manufacturers to the Wood Green Animal Shelter, where it's going to be gobbled up with relish by all their rescued dogs. Tell me something about the size of the pet food industry. It's huge now, something approaching 1.4 billion pounds and getting bigger all the time. And what about the trends in manufacturing? How is it changing? I think we've seen uh, people move away from meat and biscuits was the, the traditional thing. Still fed and still a very good way of feeding dogs. But the dry complete, the convenience food has come on in leaps and bounds and is now one of the fastest growing sections of the market. There are a bewildering variety of different foods these days. Are they all needed? Well, they are, yes. Um, I have a, a statement which I quite like, which is that uh, we're dealing with a customer who doesn't consume and a consumer who doesn't buy. And so uh, all of us as dog owners have our own views as to how we should feed our dog. Some of us think that dogs need meaty chunks and gravy and others think that a complete dry food is quite adequate. And of course the dogs have views too. Uh, some dogs uh, like the texture of dry foods, others like textures of chunks and, and so on. And so it's, a, it's that kind of choice. And you as a manufacturer have to supply all of that? Right across the board, yes. And if you decide that you wanted something that isn't going to eat you out of house and home, well, what better place to look than the toy group?
The toy group presents the companion dogs. Small, lively, and arguably this is the prettiest group in the show. All the small dogs with personalities which belie their size. The judge this year last judged this group at Crufts in 1987, Jack Mitchell. A good show dog has to have some style. It is a show. It, it's not just a, a walking a dog round. It's got to have style, and the exhibitor has got to look stylish and smart as well. I think so. Is there, are there any breeds which normally will show better than others in the toy group? Oh, yes, there are. Um, Pomeranians are very good showers, self-showers. You know, they hold themselves up well. Uh, Yorkshire Terriers are very good at showing. Now, Pekingese can be a little bit naughty, and you have to encourage them. You know, you've got to know the dog. Well, Jack Mitchell needed no encouragement to shortlist six dogs for a closer look, and the first one he picked out was the Bichon Frise. This is Tamalva Keep the Faith, pet name Faith. It's a bitch, very young, 19 months old, handled by Miss Tanara Dawson, Junior Handler of the Year. And a splendid little dog too, Peter. Very, very smart and beautifully handled. It makes all the difference, of course. Oh, there's a cracker there. And uh, Tamara says uh, that uh, Faith has really done her proud on many occasions, certainly in junior handling. So this is a wonderful experience for her. First challenge certificate today. And of course, you see handling, as I said earlier, makes a difference. And you can see the way she's moving it to perfection. This is the smooth coat Chihuahua, champion Diella Little Joe. Joe is a dog of three years old and handled and owned by Diane Lunny, who comes from Welling in Kent. And best in show UK toy dog in 1994, so it's certainly got a record. Yes, it has. A very, very old breed, of course. It's named after a Mexican city. We don't think it originated in Mexico itself. Other places of origins have been put forward, but whatever. It's the smallest breed in the world. Uh, we're looking at dogs well up to six pounds but much preferred is one two to four pounds in weight very this distinctive head of course and there's another version with a long coat and this is one that we actually uh, tipped before the program as one to watch yes we did got through well this is an italian greyhound champion fleet grace vision quest known as eagle again reasonably young three and a half years old it's a dog owned and handled by marion sprague white from epsom common and uh, actually says a medium predicted this one was when he was born that uh, he, he predicted both his color and the star quality and that he was likely to have a very big win now are we going to be influenced by that well i think we could do with that medium judging it cross don't you peter <laughs> <laughs> it's a greyhound in miniature it's very very old breed indeed in fact paintings going back to 1614 show five of these dogs queen victoria owned the breed and it said uh, frederick the great of prussia as well this is the Maltese, champion Snow Goose First Love, called Pickle. A dog, three years old, owned by Mrs. Vicky Harif and Sarah Jackson, actually handled in the ring by Sarah Jackson today. 27 challenge certificates. Sixth in the top dog of the year, all breeds competition in 1994. Reserve top dog, 1994, you name it. This is a big winner. <laughs> the dope. Well, what can we say about a dog that looks like this? I used the word glamour earlier in the programme. I'll use it again. This is a dog of supreme glamour and also determination. Look at the expression on that face. It said it, it's got a ridden, uh, a rather association with this island of Malta. We should have with that name. Where's the Papillon come from? Here we go. Champion Tussaud Storyteller, known as Disney, a two-year, three-month-old dog. This is Kay Stewart, owns him. Mark Whitehill is actually handling. This is Mark's first time in the main ring. I wonder how his nerves are going to be. It's a <laughs> big moment for, <laughs> for him there. Four challenge certificates, smashing little dog. Mm. Called the butterfly, <clears throat> give me the butterfly dog, because of the shape of the ears, which should form an angle of 45 degrees between each ear and head. Very distinctive markings. Art galleries and museums all over the world have shown this breed. Uh, probably seven, 700 years ago, the breed. The Yorkshire Terrier, well, this is no surprise. We had a very inexperienced handler last time. No one's more experienced than the owner of this uh, little chap. This is Justine, or Justin, three years old. Mr. Osman Adam Samaja. How many times have we seen him in this ring with, uh, with winners? I can't remember the last time he wasn't there. Absolutely. 
it's an amazing kennel and and he's always bred to his own type uh, you can always tell his type they're always turned out in the most wonderful condition the coat is a, a silky texture and should be dark steel blue not silver blue dark steel blue with the hair on the chest a rich bright tan well this is champion osmillion mystification osmillion that name that we all do know so very well so jack mitchell now casts a look over these six before making his decision where is he going to go moving to the right hand end of the line everyone there on tent hooks now they draw out four altogether and he's not wasting any time straight there's the yorkshire terrier well it did show absolutely beautiful and uh, osman samajar absolutely delighted the maltese gets the reserve that's splendid pickle champion snow goose first love and the smooth haired chihuahua takes third place and the Bichon Frise gets fourth. That is a marvellous lineup of toy dogs. But no question about the winner. Champion of Millian Mystification with Osman Adam Samajar from Battersea in southwest London. The reserve there, Snow Goose First Love. Smooth Head Chihuahua. And the Bichon Frise. So the prize then to be presented by Lena Pagliero, former chairman of the Kennel Club, to Osman Sanger. Many people come here to Crufts because they're thinking of buying a pedigree dog. And one thing they need to make sure they're well informed about is the hereditary diseases that may affect the breed of their choice. Now the way to make sure that the puppy you want stands a good chance of not being affected by disease is to make sure that both of its parents have been tested. So testing schemes are absolutely vital. People should have their dog's eyes tested for the plain and simple fact that unfortunately within our pedigree dog population there are a number of inherited eye problems. The vast majority of pedigree dogs uh, are fit and do lead very normal and healthy lives. But unfortunately, the intensity of some of the breeding that's gone into today's pedigree dog has not only enhanced good qualities, but has brought out some of the disease problems that we now see. And unfortunately, the eye, small though it is, has got more than its fair share of severe disease problems. So the, the check that we do is to make certain that we are breeding from animals which are free from inherited disease. The Kennel Club British Veterinary Association International Sheepdog Scheme is a purely voluntary scheme and what we ask on the scheme is that puppies are looked at at six to seven weeks of age for the congenital defects or we look at uh, the adult stock where we have a disease problem that can come throughout the animal's life and there are slightly different certificates that are issued to cover the two different schemes Now the results are published as pass or fail so that the breeder knows precisely whether that line is involved in a disease problem the fact that the information is actually computerized and and, and there is a central register through the breed supplement means that uh, there are lots of valuable things that are done with that information When a dog is brought to us to have its eye checked, uh, the first thing we do is to put some drops into the eyes, and the drops dilate the pupils, make them as big as possible, so we can see as much as possible inside the eye. Good evening, madam. How are you today? Fine, thank so you. We just put a drop into each of your puppy's eyes. After the drops are put in, we use an instrument, an ophthalmoscope, to examine the eye from front to back. We're particularly interested in disease problems that affect the lens and the retina. The image that is present in the lens consists of the head of the optic nerve, that's the round white structure, the blood vessels that feed the retina, those are the red lines, and the background color is the retina, and that's where light is converted into nerve impulse. Perfect. Well done. Good, Good boy. Chat. You know, when a pedigree dog fails the eye test, it relates to the whole breed. 
that you can't beat these diseases in isolation by hiding the results, by not declaring the results, you do the breed a gross disservice. Disease control is a breed problem and it can only be approached reasonably well if in fact breeders come together and work at the problem uh, jointly. Having spent a short spell in hospital myself, separated from my own dogs, Cat Dogs is one organisation I could really support. Any dog would have done, it would have lifted my morale, and Cat Dog volunteers take dogs of all shapes and sizes, some of them show dogs here at Crufts too, to visit people in hospitals and homes to make them feel better. When Beryl moved into a home, she was unable to keep her two Yorkies, and now lives for the weekly visits from Elaine Jones and her dogs. So you feel happy, you know, you feel down if they don't come. They make you laugh, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Especially Rosie. Yeah, go on, tell them what Rosie does. What Rosie does. Pinches the roses out the vase, don't she? <laughs> she does. And she has them in cross her mouth. Yeah. She poses herself, don't she, with them? They really do enjoy it. Uh, I've got to confess that there's a little bit of covered love here because we've got a very nice relationship with Pat, the, the cook. And usually the dog, yeah. they get a a nice little tip bit but they do enjoy coming because they they love meeting people and they love the attention they get unlike Beryl not all old people have to lose their pets and here at Crust there's an organization that can help Avril tell me something about what the Trust does Cinnamon Trust aims to keep the elderly and their pets together for example if someone has to go into a home we have a registered host that will accept pets we have someone who will walk dogs we have volunteers who will foster pets. There's no need for them to be passed. Because often that does happen, doesn't it? When, you, when an elderly person has to go into a home, they're told they have to give their pet up. What effect does that have? They die. There's no reason to live. And how can your organisation help with that? We have a nationwide network of volunteers who go in and take an old person's dog for a walk. They can enjoy the fireside together. Somebody younger can take the dog out. We have a register of old people's homes that will accept pets gladly, and the staff will help them look after them. Um, the parting eventually has to come when one of them dies, and that's a tragedy, but until that happens, there's no need for them to be parted, none at all. Now, let's face it, who would be the judge of the utility group? These are the dogs that essentially don't fit into any of the other five groups, and what a range. I mean, anything from the toy poodle, the Tibetan spaniel, hi, Julian, to the Dalmatian here, this is Wolfie and Bruno the Bulldog there, a complete range, a very difficult task. Everything from the glamour of the standard poodle to the solid bulk of the British Bulldog, this group is a real mix of breeds with equally varied and interesting histories, and they're mostly foreign breeds too. The man in the centre of the big ring for this year's utility group is Michael Quinney. Show dogs started from at a very early age for me, uh, with a Cocker Spaniel. Then, of course, my prefix for Durham was taken out with the Kennel Club in 1951. Uh, then uh, I passed my driving test and showed my pug dogs all over England very successfully. Now, today you're judging the utility group here at Crufts, and there's one particular dog that many people watching will be familiar with, the Standard Poodle. I mean, she's won top dog all breeds. She won the utility group at last year's Crufts. For you as a judge, faced with a dog like that in the ring, is it very difficult to get past her record? No, not at all, no. Of course, to get into the ring, she does have to win the CC and best of breed. But I shall judge them on the day, and I hope the best one, I'm sure, in my opinion, the best one will win. And there were 2,733 utility dogs which have been t produced 24 best of breeds. And the first of the cut was the German Spitz Klein. This is Arlen Bailey's cream at Delgray. Jess, my namesake, a dog of three years old. He's bred by Karen Hill, and the name of his owner is Fiona, is Fiona Grainer. It's Fiona who's actually uh, handling him in the ring today as well. And this is their very first year with challenge certificates. This is the smaller of the two, a beautifully compact, Thoroughly sound dog indeed. They're not always as well shaped as this, but this is a real little cracker and it fills my eye. I'm sure it fills yours, Jess. It bears quite a resemblance to the Pom, doesn't it? The Pomeranian. Oh, oh yes, that's the tiny. 
Next of the cut, the Japanese Akita, a very spectacular dog. This is champion Goshen's Bigger is Better at Redwich, Digger for short. He's a three-year-old dog, and uh, he's owned by Dave and Jenny Kil uh, Killia, I think is the right way to pronounce that. They also bred him. No, he was bred by Hearn and Peterson. Now, he's a, a real show dog, this one. He's got a, a group. He was the top Akita for 94, the top sire for 94, and he's a real clown at home, apparently. And a strikingly handsome dog, powerful as anything. I reckon I wouldn't want to get in his way, and I don't think I'd like to get in his handler's way, either. <laughs> a super mover. The Leonberger. This is Managard Adam, and Adam is just two years old. He belongs to Glenda Smith and John Freeman. He's bred by John and is handled by Glenda in the ring. They say his wins are too numerous to mention. He's an excellent swimmer, and he plays nanny to a litter of Rottweilers at home. Oh, blimey, I wouldn't have expected that. It's a breed that's really on its way up, and it looks dogs like this one, which will keep it rising. He's by an import, out of an import. We're going to see an awful lot more of Leonbergers now that they're motoring like this fella. His father's been pulled out twice in the group here. Very sound dog. Now to a bit of glamour, the miniature poodle champion, Novadine Highly Explosive, what a name. Thomas, he's a two-year-old dog and he belongs to Mrs. Nona Chatterall. She also bred him and she's handling him today. He's the top miniature poodle for 1994 and apparently he suffers from verbal diarrhoea, which I think is a wonderful description. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than some forms of diarrhoea. <laughs> Neat as nice <laughs> as he goes round the ring. He was picked out from a very goodly entry by one of our most successful poodle breeders and he goes like a really well wound up machine and a lovely mover fighting a bit for his head but what a cracker and a dog in a larger mold this is the standard poodle champion pamplona something special a very famous dog and of course tipped for this group uh, he's owned by michael code and tommy mullen and he was bred by michael top dog all breeds it's a she i'm sorry a bitch of course uh, and he so says she's a lovely to, lovely dog to show but most of all she's a lovely dog to own which is a delightful thing to say the most successful dog, as you say, of 1980, 1994, very handsome, brilliantly presented, not perhaps quite on top gear today. The Schnauzer, this is Fraser, a dog of two years old, champion Kinjan American Express, and he's owned by Mrs. Sarah Hatterall Brown, uh, who's handling him today as well. Top puppy for 93, and he was also a contender for the pup of the year. Jessica, the moment this dog walked in the ring, he really did catch my eye. Mrs. Hatterall Brown, who brought him in and is handling him now, she's had some beautiful animals, and this is an absolute cracker. Nothing exaggerated, just pure quality on the lead. I think this is going to be a right goer. This you is mark your tip my word. I reckon it could well be. Moving beautifully. What a contrast, a Tibetan Terrier this time. Champion Araki star performer, and of course we've seen the Araki kennel in the big ring before Indeed. as well. Uh, pet name is Amber, and this is a bitch of three years old. Uh, owned by Mrs. Anne Sinclair and handled by her son, Ken, in the ring. Top Tibetan Terrier for 1994. And another immensely popular dog originating from Tibet. When we first saw him come in, we thought of the breed, we weren't really quite sure what it was, and we have now learned that the TT, this beautiful creature here, he's well established, he's a real quality breed, and it makes a super house dog. Lovely fella. Quite a coat to look after, though. Oh, though. hard work. Now, Michael Quinn is going to have to make his decision from that final selection. He's called the boards out, so that means he must be almost ready. He's going to have a final look. And who can blame him? He's got some quality dogs, hasn't he, Mike? Seven people were very quickly beating hearts, that's for sure. The Japanese Akita, that lovely Leonberger. This the must be terrible poodle. for the people handling well, them. Well, it's because the waiting, it, isn't yeah. it? You know you're in there with a chance in that last seven. And he's got all this time walking back, out come the boards, and you, you wait to see what he's going to do. He's going towards that end. Mother heaven, he is! Oh, Mike, it's your tip. The Schnauzer, champion, Tim Down American Express. Fraser takes the utility group. Beautiful. And the Leonberger in reserve. Now, that must be a really exciting win for that breed. Well, I told you they were on the way up. What a Japanese cracker. Japanese Akita in group third place.
spectacular dog and that lovely little spit. First year with tickets to Cruft and they get into the top four of a group. But it's the Schnauzer's Day. What a delightful group winner. We'll be seeing him later on, of course, for Cruft's Best in Show. Now, of course, most of the dogs that you see here at Crufts are in the peak of condition, but any dog, as it goes through its life, is going to suffer from the odd bad day, the odd ailment. Mark Elliott here is a homeopathic vet. Now, that almost sounds like a contradiction in terms. Right. Well, not really. We're actually all conventionally trained veterinary surgeons who basically added homeopathy to our repertoire of treatments, which has really enabled us to have a sort of greater scope of therapy. Uh, and treat more illnesses more successfully. We've got a lovely, lovely Welsh Springer Spaniel here, her name's Solo, she's nine years old. She's already been in the ring today and uh, in the veteran class. You've got some kits there. What sort of things might you have that could help a dog like this? Well, these are just a few remedies which uh, many homeopaths carry as a, on a first aid basis. Um, there are some three and a half thousand remedies, but these are just a few simple ones readily available. Aconite here is an example is a great remedy for shock and fright. And occasionally dogs can go into the ring and for some, some, some reason become upset. They lose their presence, their ability to show well as they've been trained. And for some reason, this something often happens to older dogs. Aconite, a few doses of, will often bring them back into that, get them over their fears, and they'll perform well and hopefully do well as Solé did when she came third today in, in her class. And what about the fact that she is a veteran? I mean, older dogs do tend to get a bit crumbly, don't they? Right. Is homeopathy helpful? I think homeopathy can help many of the ageing ailments in, in, in dogs and sort of gently use them through their, their, their latter years. Commonly, arthritis is, a, is, is treated homeopathically with remedies such as rust tox, which is made from poison ivy, uh, which is used to um, treat arthritis that are stiff after rest, um, having done a little bit of exercise. So you're not using any sort of invasive drug or anything like that? It's simply to, to help the older dog through its ailment? Yeah. Nobody really knows um, quite why homeopathic remedies work. All we know is how they work and the way in which they seem to have an effect on the dog. They're not, they don't have any demonstrable side effects. Uh, they're all made from natural, natural products. So for a veteran like Soleil, really helpful? Yes, very much so. Any right-minded person abhors cruelty to animals, but when some senseless action leaves both a person and a dog traumatised, well, your heart bleeds. Here's how the Guide Dogs for the Blind Association dealt with such a case. Piecing the story together, it appears that Zena was taken out of the garden and then taken some miles away from home and literally dumped into a frozen lake. Zena must have spent a lot of time in that lake. She was very badly hypothermia, uh, but she was also very badly scratched and cut. Her paws were in a terrible state. She'd obviously been scrambling on the ice to try and get out. She was very badly traumatised. When Zena was uh, eventually found, the Guide Dogs Association had Zena. Um, Ken Underwood took care of Zena, but she was in such a state, it was just unbearable. It was unbearable for me because I knew that she was so poorly. Um, I felt ill myself, or would have preferred it to have happened to me than to Zena. It's difficult to know where to start in, with a dog in this situation. The first thing is to get her physical uh, condition right. And the staff in the kennels did a tremendous job. But my concern was for her mental well-being, because if she was to work as a guide dog again, she was going to have to be mentally ready for that. And I had to assess how much stress Zena was under, and would she be able to work under those sort of conditions? So after having her in the office here and getting her more relaxed, more confident, I then began to take her out into the areas where she'd been trained to work when she was originally here in November, putting her through the obstacle course where she had to guide me without bumping me against any of the obstacles. Once she'd been through that obstacle course a few times, you could see her confidence almost visibly lifting. Straight, straight, good girl, over, over, good girl, up, up now. That's a good girl, steady girl, over, good girl, good, steady girl. She knew steady. that she was back on familiar territory and she could do the job. I spent some time with Zina on her own working here before we called Jean back to the centre. 
I don't think there was a dry eye amongst the people who watched the reunion. Jean came and spent four days to get together again with Zena, but also for us to watch their reactions. Part of checking Zena's work again was to check that she was going to be able to react to traffic. So we took her out and we did quite a bit of work in the streets, getting cars to come past her and making sure that Zena reacted to them. She would stop and not allow Jean to go any further while the car was there. This showed that she was accepting the responsibility of the work again. From there we'd move into busier and busier conditions until towards the end of her stay here, we felt that Zena could face the areas again that she was going to have to work in. When we got reunited after she got well at the guide dog centre, it was just a wonderful feeling. We're together and we're going to work together and I'm sure it's going to have a real happy ending. As you join us back live here in the main arena as the six contenders for best in show come into the ring to the applause of the crowd. We're now looking at the Welsh Terrier, the winner of the Terrier group, and just entering the ring now, the Bortoy. That's Shulwood striking rubies coming in the Borzoi there. And finally, the Yorkshire Terrier coming in, champion of Million Mystification. I'll just go through the six as they are in the ring already. The Irish Setter, which was the winner of the Gundog Group. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got the Schnauzer coming in. And there's the Schnauzer. That's just won the utility group. I mean, she must have had to race round to the collecting ring, race into the best in show ring. Hardly a gap at all. Yes, they have rather hurried through into this, they but that have. is the group. So, as we say, the Irish setter there is the first the winner of the Gundog Group. Champion Star Shell Chicago Bear. And now the Shetland Sheepdog winner. Champion Myra Hugh group. Rosa Blue. And the Welsh Terrier from the Terrier Group. Champion Person Leading Lady at Wigmore. The Borzoi Shulwood Striking Rubies. Yorkshire Terrier, champion as Million Mystification. And finally, the Schnauzer, champion Kinjan American Express. Those are the six. And this is the judge, George Down, being led into ring by Mark Hutchins, chairman of the Cuffs Committee. Into the ring, shaking hands with the steward. And now he has probably the happiest choice. He's probably the proudest man at the National Exhibition Centre as he walks out to make his assessment. Well, the one thing he does know for sure, Mike, is that what he's got there are six superb dogs. Well, he's had the privilege over the last four, four days in seeing them selected. And that must be quite a trial, because if somebody doesn't pick the ones you liked in a group, you feel very disappointed, but he really has. He's got six absolutely lovely specimens to go over. And a judge with a massive amount of experience. He was telling me when I talked to him earlier that he judges an enormous amount abroad. So he doesn't just see judges, see dogs in this country, but elsewhere in the world too. Well, he now will inspect each of the dogs individually, take his time. This is show champion Starchell Chicago Bear. Joshua is known as a four-year-old, well, enormous four and a half four and a half year old dog, an Irish setter, owned and handled by Miss Rachel Shaw from Batley in Yorkshire. They've won seven challenge certificates. And this, as I think we said in the group when we showed the yesterday, the gun dog group, this is a smasher. It's a really glamorous breed, isn't it, Mike? I mean, look at that coat gleaming against the green base. Does it some extra favours being that wonderful colour, doesn't well, it? Well, it might have been picked for the dog, mightn't it? How important is this movement? I mean, we watch well, it with all of these dogs, but it is vital, isn't it? It's absolutely vital. And the dog's made wrong, he just won't go right. And obviously, he's unlikely to get this far unless he is made right. Well, he's already been best in show, setter and pointer championship show in 1993. Well, now we look at the Shetland Sheep. This is champion Mary Hugh Rosa Blue, Rosa for short, and she's a 20-month-old bitch. 
Irene Bieder is the name of her owner, who's also handling her, and she bred her as well, so she must be really proud to have her in the big ring just now. I just think the colours here are absolutely gorgeous. That coat isn't it just, just it's blue super. merle, isn't it? It's an exquisite colour, and the, the profusion of coat too just helps to accentuate it. Shows off the face as well, so nicely as well. The eyes just look lovely and all that. What do you think, Mike? Around. Well, it's a, a, what an experience for somebody to come with a dog with only one and three quarter years experience and crack the working group because that is the hardest group by a long, long chalk. Certainly, to it's win. 43 breeds. Yeah, 5,000 and some dogs that beat. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a record. George, George is really enjoying this. He's placing a lot of importance on that expression, the alertness of the dog, isn't he? This is the Welsh Terrier, winner of the Terrier Group, champion, first and leading lady at Wigmore. Now, the interesting thing about Katie, as she's known, is that she had the reserve ticket here last year. That meant she was the, the best bitch. Her brother was the best in show. He isn't actually a full brother. He's a, a lady here is from two litters later, but from the same mating. Same so way it's a bread, full yes. sister. And uh, that shows what a cracking pairing that is. <laughs> Can you imagine producing even one as good as this yeah. and then finding that one bred the same way comes out of the top drawer just like yeah. that? Can you tell which one is better, though? That's <laughs> the $6,000 question, isn't well, it? Well, I'll let you into a secret that, that uh, the, the, the group judge spoke to me this morning, Lionel Hamilton Rennick, and he said he thought this was better than last year's Best in Show. Now, there you go. There's a little pointer. So, will she go best in show tonight? She's certainly moving well, isn't she, Mike? She's a, she's a very pretty animal, and, and I would agree, I'm afraid, with... Uh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that about Lionel. <laughs> I shouldn't be afraid to agree with him. But you know what I mean. She looks like very it's the relaxed, first time, she? <laughs> Just four years old, that bitch. That's absolutely lovely. And George Down is going to move on now to the winner of the Hound Group, Shoalwood Striking Rubies of Borzoi. She's three years old. Ruby at home, well that makes sense doesn't it with a name like that. She belongs to Richard Duckworth who's also handling her. It was her first challenge certificate, then she won the group and now she's in the big ring for best in show at Crufts. I should imagine that poor Mr Duckworth must be shaking from his head to his feet, wouldn't you have thought Mike? I wouldn't mind how I got into his position, I would be shaking when I got <laughs> something that had been winning all its life or come good at three year old but this is a very graceful animal and moves like a, a true boar's always should. Apparently she's a working hound too, so I mean, that would explain her fitness, wouldn't it? I thought they went after wolves. Where does he do that? <gasps> I think he's probably just chasing rabbit lures. He's just those lovely little furry things that race around tracks. Oh, I, I see. All very nicely placed. Well, he's not only putting out champions in this country as well. He's got Australian and American champions as well. Ah, he well. says he's got two on the way to a French title, but maybe he's boasting. Here we go with the toy, the baby. Yorkshire Terrier, champion as million mystification, and we've already said countless times, Mr. Osman Adam Samaja has been in this ring, in this position, challenging for the title. Just look at the shine on that dog's coat. Disappeared behind George at the moment, but... Uh... I'm neither of you ever seen a pedigree of one of his... Yorkshire Terriers, it just looks like a, a champion after champion after champion after champion. And does he bring in any outside stock? I mean, is very, it all Very, very rarely. Yes. Very rarely indeed. So that lion is just kept, and uh, I mean, the, the dogs just look so perky and so bright, and they move so beautifully. Sign of a good handler there too. Takes his time to take her off the, the rostrum and, and put her on the ground, get her together, and then off she goes. And just look at the movement. And just listen to the crowd. One could say that he's possibly the most experienced handler in cross oh. this year. I mean, he's, he's just well, certainly in, in, in this ring at the moment, that's for sure. He claims now the he's very intelligent, the... very loving. We move on to your utility group winner now, the Schnauzer. Yes, tonight's final group, the Schnauzer, champion Kinjan American Express, Fraser for short. He's just two years old as well, so another one who's, who's really very young to be in this position. He was the top puppy in 93. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Apart from any other advantage he may have in his looks, his handler has been showing good schnauzers at the top for a very long time. And of course his grandfather is champion Sidley's Dutch Bargmaster, Bargmaster who was seven times best of breed winner here at Crub. I mean, that's a hell of a pedigree. He was here today. 
in was the veteran he? class, yeah. Well, he got beaten by his um, great great grandson. I don't suppose she was terribly surprised. <laughs> uh, this is Sarah Hatchell Brown handling Kinjin, American Express, there. And now George Down has the task of looking at them one more time he's going to move them actually up and down the ring now so he can watch their movements from directly behind and directly in front because this is often where it's clinched isn't it mike i mean the dog this is the point where the, the, the sparkle factor comes in well that that's one thing but it always strikes me that you might send the thing that you were going to put to the top up and it goes not quite as well as you hope and then you just don't know what to do next but the, none of these will let him down. Not at this level. Well, the Welsh Terrier here. The best Terrier on show out of 2074. And I've got, actually, secretly, I've got my money on this one. Yes, this is the point Second where we ought to be it thinking be, about, uh, about... Unlikely, but it's possible. It's happened before. The Borzoi, there were uh, 2,748 hounds here. That's the best of them. Now we get another treat seeing the movement of this Yorkshire Terrier. People who say that toy dogs are sort of silly little things really do not know what they're talking about, do they? I mean, that is a big dog in a tiny little package. You wouldn't want to put your foot in the door if he didn't <laughs> want you to come. <laughs> now this and is very popular with the crowd. Of course, today we do have the utility crowd here and we have the toy crowd, but that's certainly we're seeing a tremendous amount of applause. If this and comes out of the top, it won't half produce an explosion. It'll lift the roof, I should think. So, George Down, what is he going to pick? He's got his walk up and down. The boxes, the rostra are coming out for Crufts Best in Show and Reserve Best in Show. No four coming out this time. This is just two. The winner and the reserve. It's going to be an anti-climax for one and a massive success for the other. So, whilst George casts his eye over these, the Guard of Honour comes out from the Kennel Club Junior Organisation take their places by the Rostrum. This is the moment. Yes, it is. It's and Irish it's the setter. Irish setter. Second year running. Well, second year running, but one. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I miss out. The Irish setter there, absolutely marvellous. Joshua, four years old. At Well, the Welsh there, the Welsh Terrier getting the reserve, that's splendid. But not quite best in show for the Welsh Terrier. That's a marvellous moment for Stampion, St Stampion? Champion Starchell, <laughs> Chicago Bear, the Irish Setter, the winner of the Gundog Group, and now best in show at Crufts for 1995. And the Welsh Terrier, Katie. Reserve best of breed last year. <laughs> Just look at the evidence of winning dogs. That's Bouncing the, up. And well, the Terrier doesn't know he's second. He thinks he's first. <laughs> 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 Wonderful to see the two of them, the Irish Setter and the Welsh Terrier. And the presentation is actually going to be made by... Lady Blatch, there's the trophy coming out, being brought by the head of security here, David Clark, and that is some pot. Very smart, very handsome. And Lady Blatch goes over to congratulate our winning owner. Lady Blatch, Minister of State at the Home Office. The trophy being handed over by David Clark. That makes a pretty picture on that. Well, the dog showed magnificently, moved magnificently. Absolutely. This, in fact, was the first group winner that we saw throughout yes. the show. And on the first day, that was our gun dog day this year. We've had four days of marvellous competition. And what a worthy win. I don't think anyone's going to grumble about that. And by the time you've got six dogs in here for the best in show, 
<laughs> that's just exactly as you'd expect people to be. Well, you can't really blame Rachel Shaw for leaping up and down like that. She's very excited as Lady Blatch hands over the... Mine. It's not a bad pot for reserve, is it? No. That's <laughs> take just as much cleaning as the other one. I'll it's a you. little bit bigger than Katie. But, uh, but fortunately, they're not allowed to take them home. <laughs> so they don't have to do their own cleaning. They don't take them home. These live at the Kennel Club. Well, that is a marvellous competition, a very worthy winner. Show champion, Star Child Sh Chicago Bear, Joshua, this four-year-old, four-and-a-half-year-old dog from Batley in Yorkshire. Rachel Shaw said, Joshua holds my heart. I thought it was a lovely expression, and I can see why. It'll probably, it'll probably hold her heart even more now that he's won this wonderful prize. I see Jessica's down there in the ring. She does a job to stop and talk to her. She doesn't wave her out. Yes. <laughs> so over to Jess in the ring. Thank Rachel. You, oh, he's got to, Joshua's got to say the word first. Rachel, many, many congratulations. Thank you. You said in the sheet that you gave us about Joshua that he holds your heart. I mean, what about now? He's always held my heart, and he's just my special boy. I love him. What can I say? He's a gentleman, a showman. And, I mean, what would you do if you'd got a dog like this? And to win Best in Show at Crafts, I mean, what about believe it yet? It hasn't sunk in. Of course it won't. What have the last four days been like? Uh, I didn't sleep Thursday and Friday night. I managed to sleep last night. I had a few whiskies. Um, I was just so... I didn't think we'd win because DD won, won two years ago, you know? So... Oh, it's just... It's been fabulous. People, I must say thank you, please, to everybody in the breed and in Gun Dogs who have phoned up and sent so many congratulations and good wishes. The goodwill from the breed has been overwhelming. Thank you. What about what about the dog? I mean, how has Joshua taken to the last four days? I mean, you've not been sleeping. Well, what about him? He didn't fancy getting in the bath again. So it was a bit mean having to get in the clean water two days, you know, sort of. And, um, but he just takes everything in his stride. This dog is so laid back. He's, t he's just he's wonderful. I can't tell you. He's just wonderful. He's Have you been everything. taking him out for long walks to calm him and you down? Just once, because then I thought, oh, God, if anything happens to him, I'll die. So. Now, go through the last few minutes with us. I mean, you've been out with the final six in the big ring. He looked as if he was taking everything in his stride. Yes, he does. That's the wonder of him. That, that's because he's a showman. And, well, what can I, I just, It's just so wonderful. I can't explain it, but it's like winning the lottery, if you like, OK? You know, that's how wonderful it is. So at least everyone will be able My to... My stars, Patrick Walker, you are absolutely spot on. My stars this morning in Daily Mail. You what did it say? It said, my whole world is going to change. Um, Oh, I can't remember, I can't remember, but, you know, it well, was listen, good. And from all of us viewing, many, many congratulations to you. It's a wonderful win. It's been delightful to talk to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, the celebrations will be carrying on down there for quite a while. Our congratulations to Rachel Shaw and to Joshua. A marvellous win for them. And we wish them all the very best in the coming year. And as quick apology, I gather you, some of you may have had difficulty with uh, colour loss of colour during uh, an earlier part of the programme. We're sorry for that, but it is a live show. All sorts of things happen. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the four days here at Crufts. We've had a marvellous time. And I say we hope you've enjoyed it. But if you'd like to see some more dogs, well, you can. Don't forget, next Saturday, 6 o'clock, BBC Two. Join me and Jess from the whole team here. Goodbye. Oh! <laughs>